Hey, this is Matt Woodmer from Ready Precision. In this video, we're taking a look at a couple different ways that we can configure our VPNs when we're using a product like TaziBox to access our sites uh, remotely. Uh, depending on the site uh, and depending on whether or not you're using something like BACnet IP, there may be some additional tweaking that you need to be that you need to do. Uh, something like a layer two network versus a layer three. Uh, network style connection uh, will make a huge difference, especially if you're using BACnet IP. And we'll get into that here uh, in the slideshow. All right, so we're gonna start out with the default settings. This is the default settings on a Tazi box, and most VPN solutions are gonna default you to this uh, style of doing things. It works great 99% of the time, but if you're using BACnet IP, you will run into issues with uh, the way that you connect to your BACnet IP devices on that remote network. They just won't work, and that's because of the way BACnet IP uh, functions uh, as it was designed. It relies a lot on broadcast communications, and broadcast communications only work on your subnet. Routers will not ra uh, route broadcast uh, packets intentionally because obviously if you have broadcast packets that are getting broadcast outside of your network big problems could happen um, so they intentionally don't do that and uh, we want to be able to use our backnet IP devices when we're uh, connecting to a remote network so this is something that we need to keep in mind so why do we use layer 3 as the default um, one it allows us to not use IPs that are on that local network at your remote site. So uh, you're not going to use up any of that uh, available IP space that you're using at the remote site. And um, it's just a, a more efficient way of communicating between the, the remote device and your uh, network that you're uh, remotely trying to connect to. And uh, as I say here, your uh, VPN router is going to perform the routing. So it's going to take your IP address and route it to the LAN network that's at the remote site. So in our example here, we've got, and we'll you look at this example, same exact example, but switch for layer two on the next slide. On layer three, we can see here we've got this laptop, we've got a TaziBox key for it, and our VPN connection is giving us this 172 uh, subnet IP address when we're connecting to this remote lock. And that remote lock has a LAN IP address that you've probably seen before, 192.168, yada, yada, yada. And this may look like you shouldn't be able to communicate with those devices on the LAN side, but you can because that uh, remote lock is handling that routing for you. It knows, hey, you're talking to this specific subnet. I know that I need to path you through me and into that uh, LAN network. So in this example, our laptop is able to communicate with our JACE. All of the uh, protocols that we use at a JACE, our FOX, our platform, um, all of that will work properly through a uh, layer three routed uh, VPN. Same with you know normal web traffic. So our port 80, our port 443 will all work exactly as intended. But if we try to pull up something like um, PCT or CCT, excuse me, um, your BACnet IP device that you're trying to program will not communicate properly because that traffic that's required for BACnet IP to work properly won't get through on either end. Our router is kind of acting as the stopping point here for that broadcast traffic and it won't let it, it won't pass it through. And, and that's a good thing. So we can get around this issue by switching our VPN to layer two. Um, this is done on a per key basis. If you're using something like a lock, you would use the lock web interface to uh, go to your keys and lock screen and then hit a drop down and then switch over to layer two. And uh, that's all you need to do from a TaziBox perspective. Um, this operates on the layer two of the OSI model, which is our link layer. And uh, so basically below IP, uh, IP is our layer three. And um, it essentially functions as if you had a long ethernet cable that was uh, 
connecting you from your remote site, wherever you are, to that lock out at the uh, building that you're trying to connect to on the LAN side. Um, the remote uh, network router will perform the routing here, and our BACnet IP will work because, if we look at the example, our VPN adapter is getting an IP address that's on the same uh, subnet as our LAN at the remote site. So there's no routing happening. Uh, we are directly communicating between our device and the other device. If we pull up our uh, BACnet IP software to program our BACnet IP devices, if we wanted to do a BACnet uh, discovery or anything like that from our uh, PC here, we could do it because our broadcast communication is functioning as it should because we are on the same subnet. So now let's just jump over real fast into a lock uh, web interface and I'll show you how you can make this change. All right, so I'm logged in now to a lock that's in our building. This is our lock that's on our demo wall that allows us to get access to all of our demo devices that we have for testing and uh, demonstration, that kind of thing. And we can see here that um, to get to this screen, I just logged into my lock, the web interface, went to settings and then keys and locks and pulled this up. And on here, we have a list of all of our keys that have access to this lock. And in order to change to layer two, in order to get our BACnet IP communications, or um, we just hit this drop down. We're just changing from layer three, which will be the default, to layer two, which is um, what we want in order to communicate over BACnet IP. And then we could set a static IP address if you wanted to, um, but that's not necessary. And then we're going to scroll down here to the bottom, hit save and we're good to go. We would be able to access our devices through BACnet IP and um, everything would work properly. Again, you don't need to do this unless you have a specific reason to. I would definitely say to stay at the layer three default unless you have a specific need, whether it be BACnet IP or some other uh, communication that requires that broadcast um, traffic to go through in order to work properly. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any more interest in this kind of networking specific stuff, uh, be sure to check out our Networking 101 series that we did several years ago. Um, nothing has really changed in the world of networking as far as the fundamentals. So that Networking 101 series is still uh, very much viable and good information to have uh, if you want to learn more. Thanks for watching as always. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. And if there's anything specific that you want to see related to networking or uh, BACnet IP, maybe BBMD, which would let you, uh, let you do this kind of stuff in a layer three scenario instead of having to switch to layer two, leave those down in the comments below. Uh, thanks as always for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks.